This next piece is a very unique rough stained end table. Now, on the top of this table, it's nice and rugged, and this is going to be a unique project for us in which we'll need to obviously clean it, but we're thinking of stripping it and then restaining it, possibly just to make the natural color of the wood more vibrant, but possibly experimenting in a different type of stain for this piece. Yeah, this piece definitely has a lot of potential. I actually adore this piece. Um, wish we could possibly keep it, but, um, well, that's be determined, to be determined, so. Here we have the rust stain end table, and you can see one of my daughters is painting in the background with the roller. We're going to use citrus stripper here to get the finish off of the top of this table and hopefully take some of the color off of it as well. Now, this stuff, when you put this on, can dry quite quickly, especially if you're in a hot climate. And when it dries, it becomes really hard to get off. It becomes extremely sticky. But we really enjoy using this product it allows us to get a lot of the finish and sealer and paint and any other thing that's stuck on to your piece of furniture off. What we do to try to keep it from drying is something we saw on another YouTube channel of just putting plastic over it and this helps keep it from evaporating or drying up. So I'm going to cinch this all down with some painter's tape and hopefully none of the bags blow away and the instructions say that you should let it work its magic for about 15 20 minutes and then you can start stripping this or cleaning this stripper off of your piece of furniture Here's the bottle of the citrus strip that I use and if you do a lot of flipping projects it will you will go through it quite quickly. So as you can see taking this off it gets extremely messy. Now I have a metal scraper that I'm going to be using on this table but I would highly recommend that you use a plastic one instead just so you don't put any deep gouges into the piece of furniture that you're stripping off. I did not do that however for this piece of furniture and even if I did I will have sanded it down later which I will not have noticed any damage done by the metal scraper. So this can get quite messy and after I got it all off, we clean it off with mineral spirits, wiping it with just an old t-shirt rag, try to get the rest of the stripper off of the table and any residue that's still on there. Now it looks really good and I honestly thought I had most of the stripper off, but I did not wait for it to completely dry. And so it's going to be caking a bunch of residue on my random orbital sander. And I'm using 80 grit sandpaper to get this smoothed out and the rest of the stain off of the wood but it's not working very well and you're going to see how much it's caking on. Now I'm using metal scraper to get all of this off of the sandpaper but I also found out that if you take the sanding pads and let them soak in acetone 
they'll come out clean and you'll be able to get that stuff off of it a lot easier. I didn't have acetone and I didn't realize I could do it at the time so I chose to grab myself a 100 grit sandpaper and do this all by hand and you can see that I am just getting a lot off but also tearing up the sandpaper and just getting all of this residue all over the gloves and just having a hard time with this piece. I do a lot more sanding and then after that I put more mineral spirits and get it cleaned off more. That's why the color seems to have gone back to the wood. Now I tried my very best to get this more leveled and smooth, but as you can see there as you can see there's still some indents in the table. But it looks really nice and really smooth to the touch. Now I'm unsure of what kind of wood this is. It was a hard wood, but it did not seem very porous. But as you can see that I did not sand it smooth and it must not be a type of fur but it also does not look quite like oak so put in the comments below what you think or you know that this wood is now I'm going to use a staining pad from Rust-Oleum as well as the Old Master's Deep Red Wiping Stain, which is the vintage burgundy, to try to get this color back. Now here's a side-by-side -side comparison because I'm also going to be using the Minwax Wood Finish, but red mahogany with it. And the reason is, is because when I put on this dark red burgundy, it's just too red and there's a slight tinge of a type of golden oak underneath the original stain on this end table. So what I'm going to do first is put on the Old Master's stain and it says to let it dry. I believe I let it dry up to I think about five to ten minutes on this piece and then I'm going to wipe the, re the rest of the residue off that hasn't dried on and then I'm going to apply the Minwax red mahogany stain over the top of it and in the end product you can't really notice the difference but I probably should have put the red mahogany on first and then the red stain but it's hard to even see much of the difference with the end product after we get the finish and sealer on top of it. I'm gonna let this stand again for about five to ten minutes and then I'm going to go back and we're wiping off the residue of the red mahogany stain. Now you can see that this color and stain has matched really, really closely to what the original color was, as well as it's matching the legs and the base of the table. There are some damages done on the legs and I'm going to be using this little wood finish marker and it's also red mahogany. I didn't have to get a vintage burgundy to get more color into the legs 
thankfully this was able to get enough color to cover it up. So these little markers are really easy for detailed touch-ups, but just be sure that after you apply your touch-up that you're going to go back and wipe the residue off or you're going to have like a blob caked on to your piece of furniture where you've been fixing these scratch marks. So now I'm going to be showing you a, the shellac that I'm using from Bullseye. It's a Rust-Oleum brand. And I show you this again, it's going to be the clear transparent. And I have a specific brush, natural hair brush, that I'm going to be using because apparently it's extremely important to get the best brush you can to use in putting on the top coat sealer for sealing up wood stains. I do admit though that putting on this shellac ends up being sticky if you go over the brush strokes again and you want to be able to get it on nice and smooth and the type of brush that you're using most definitely is going to be important. I end up putting on about three coats on this. I sand the first one lightly with about 220 grit sandpaper and then after it cures I put on a sand first then allow it to cure and put on the second and third layer for added protection. And shellac is a really good product for this protection. We did get this piece of furniture for free. So here's the before and here's the after and it looks just gorgeous. I got that color back and it's a lot smoother at the top. We ended up not keeping this and selling it for $45. Thank you for watching.